Do I have a favorite sweater? I pretty much like any sweater. I really like sweaters that are cashmere though. Some days I'm extra bougie. I also love that word. Ooh, guys, Pocahontas. It says you can paint with all the blank of the wind. Colors. That was 1990s, right, Pocahontas? Colors. Let's just, I don't know, let's just open it up. Wow, y'all, that's a nice spread. So I got what I wanted. It was looking a little boring here on set. And there's also tons of crumbs. I wonder who's that from? Who was snacking at the light table? That to me could be like a Morganite, maybe. Emerald, Peridot, Aqua, maybe a Tanzanite. That could be a ruby. We are actually gonna talk about the colors of gemstones and where they come from. So for instance, chromium is responsible for the green of an emerald and also for the red of a ruby. And we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into uh, what gems are colored by what. Okay, so light is basically a electromagnetic vibration and at certain wavelengths is visible to the human eye. So it's only visible to the human eye between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. In between those are the colors that you guys may know as Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Red is at 700 nanometers and violet is at the end about 400 nanometers. And that is a super, super, super watered down two second lesson on light. But it's really important because that kind of is the basics for what we can talk about with gemstones. So today we're gonna talk about allochromatic and idiochromatic gemstones. This is two different ways gemstones basically get their color. So first of all, an allochromatic stone is when the chemical structure of a gemstone requires outside trace elements or impurities to get the color for a respective gem. So for example, the base of the sapphire corundum chemical structure is Al2O3, so aluminum and oxygen. When you add titanium and iron, you get blue sapphire. When you add chromium, you get Ruby. So an allochromatic gem, think you need all, all things to give color. An yeah. idiochromatic gem is just the opposite. So let's say the chemical structure of peridot. The chemical structure of peridot doesn't need anything else to give peridot that color. I always think idiochromatic and idiot would only depend on their self, while an allochromatic gem depends on all. All right, so first of all is ruby. Ruby is colored by chromium. Chromium is also responsible for coloring emeralds. Jade, just because you have a stone that has chromium doesn't mean there's a hard fast rule that's gonna be red or green. It just depends on the chemical composition and how much is in the stone. All right, so right here, this is a tanzanite. If you, maybe a future episode could be proper tweezer technique. Tanzanite is actually colored by vanadium. Vanadium is responsible for some coloring in emeralds, which is so cool because this is kind of a, you know, a violet blue stone and it can also make emeralds green. We have aquamarine. Barrel is kind of the base chemical structure, but when you add iron to that structure, you get aquamarine. Iron is actually one of the more common elements that is responsible for coloring gems. Iron coupled with titanium actually gives blue sapphire that really bright blue. Blue. Um, so pretty cool that iron can give two stones, basically two different blues. All right, now we have peridot. This is an idiochromatic stone. The chemical structure of peridot is responsible for that beautiful green color. And if you want to learn more about peridot, we've done a couple episodes on there and we'll pop up the links. Okay, so right here we have a morganite. This is a pretty pale specimen. Usually uh, the ones that I've seen, they're a little bit brighter of like a peach or a pink. We can think manganese for the color of morganite. We can also think manganese for the color of spessartite, rhodolite, rhodonite, and rhodochrosite. I named like four or five off there, and that's one element. All right, so we've already touched on emerald, but emerald is probably my favorite gemstone, so it's gonna get extra face time today on YouTube. This beautiful green stone can be colored by chromium and vanadium. So basically, when you think of emerald, you're gonna get it from Brazil, Colombia, Zambia, and I've actually heard of some Ethiopian emeralds. The coloring agents, whether it's chromium or vanadium, are gonna vary by location, but both of those are still gonna be responsible for kind of the slightly bluish 
green, green hue of emerald. All right, so Morganite is colored by manganese, so is Kunzite. Look at the difference between these two stones. They're both kind of pale. I have seen specimens of both stones that are a little bit more vibrant and saturated. Kunzite typically has that kind of yellow, slightly purple hue, and manganese is known for that peachy look. You know, it's super cool that we have seven different stones and five or six major agents that we talked about today. I have a beautiful bright blue stone. I have a morganite, which we talked about is usually kind of like a peachy, pinky color, and then I have an emerald. These are three different stones. They're all in the barrel family. Um, other members of the barrel family would be Goshenite, Emerald, Morganite, Aquamarine, Bixbite. Those are all, you know, pretty different looking stones, and it's the same family. Basically, the difference is what is coloring them. So you have iron for Aquamarine, Manganese for Morganite, and either Chromium or Vanadium for Emerald. All right, guys, I want you to take a closer look at Ruby and Emerald, not just because they're basically my two favorite stones, but because one is red and one is green and they both can be colored by chromium. today comment below and let me know what was the favorite fact that you learned today and also let me know if you would want to learn more about color and color theory and gemology i think this would be a really cool episode to do um, a few more I think this would be a really cool topic to do a few more episodes on, but I wanna hear from you. So don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends so that they can start learning about gemology and, and color and how awesome emeralds are. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you later. Bye.